Why do we put candles on birthday cake? Hi there, I'm Aria, and I love birthdays. Hi, I'm Ray, and I love to bake cakes. And today we're going to talk about the history of birthday cake. Happy birthday, Ray. This is weird, Aria. Because it's not your birthday? Yes. Or because on a base level, it's a little odd that to celebrate you emerging from your mother's womb, you expect a beautifully decorated pastry to be set on fire. Because it's not my birthday. Great question, Ray. How did birthday cakes become the tradition that they are today? I have a story for you. You knew it wasn't my birthday. You just... Apart from democracy and a whole bunch of philosophers, we can also thank the ancient Greeks for the first burning cakes. Greeks would make round cheesecakes as offerings to the goddess of the moon, Artemis. They then put candles on the cake, both because they thought fire could send good intentions to the gods, and so the cakes would glow like the moon. Is that such a nice thought? It's nice. Seems a lot of, like a lot of work. You know, some religions they just light a candle on fire yeah. and they'll be like, cool. We're done. I feel like it's a lot of effort to get a prayer out, honestly. A little bit. And while that is believed to be the birth of the flaming cake, it wasn't to celebrate anyone's birthday. One reason was because, well, no one knew when anyone was born. The practice of recording birthdays wouldn't become popular until the Christian church began doing so in the medieval period. The tradition of throwing birthday parties for children may date back to Germany in the 1400s. They were called Kinderfest, or literally, children party. Germans believed children were particularly susceptible to evil spirits on their birthdays, and that candles on the cake would transport their wishes to God. Families and friends kept the candles lit all day, keeping watch until after the evening meal when the cake would be served. Imagine being like just a horrible older sibling, and you're just like, I want my younger sibling to just have a bad birthday. I'm gonna make sure that their birthday candle is gonna be off. Man, that's sadistic. Foreshadowing the amount of attention birthdays demand today, in 1746, German Count Ludwig von Zinzendorf celebrated his birthday with a giant cake on a table in the shape of an L. For Ludwig, the cake had holes bored into it according to the person's age and to place the candles into. Oh, and he also had his name spelled out in two foot tall golden letters. How basic. I feel like your uh, measurements are a little off. Yeah, I, 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 I wouldn't say this is to scale, but I think if you just, if you squint a little bit, uh, it, it can look pretty big. Squint, use your imagination. If I, look it through my, if I look at it through my fingers, like it looks pretty big to me. This tradition made its way to America when large numbers of Germans emigrated to Pennsylvania during the colonial period. American women became more prolific bakers than their European counterparts due to the relative absence of bakeries and abundance of oven fuel, aka trees. The cakes they were making, however, were still pretty lame by today's standards. Fruit cakes and yeasty rich cakes. Gross. What we think of cake couldn't emerge until British chemist Alfred Byrd combined sodium bicarbonate and cream of tartar. Baking powder. Well, an early version, anyway. Finally, cakes could rise without yeast and achieve a level of light fluffiness that had previously been extremely difficult and time consuming. No, this is definitely something closer to what I would bake currently. It's lighter and it's less of a uh, bread good. loaf. Less hockey puck like. Yeah. yeah, pretty different. Not long after, more festive decorations and frostings became popular. Back then, cookbooks included recipes for colored frostings made from parsley and beets. Yum. We should try it. I'm gonna try it though. Let's just try it. That's actually really good. Wow. It is. I'm not mad at that. That, that tasted good. So who knows? Maybe the parsley, uh, maybe there's something good. Uh, yeah, that's uh, good. Yeah. It's a, it's a, oh, that's a big. It's a chunky looking green. I don't know how I'm gonna feel. Oh, no. Wow, wow, no. That really tastes like parsley. You get, you have the texture of the parsley. Do you get, you can feel? Woo! Oh. It's like a wheatgrass shot put into frosting. That, that's messed up. That's that, messed up. That's sadistic. No, that's that sadistic. one we could burn. Light, fluffy cakes with candles and colored frosting were given out on birthdays. Sounds like the birthday cake we all know and love, right? Not quite yet. While it was popular to have writing on cakes in the late 1800s, they would say things like the person's name along with many happy returns of the day. Catchy. 
It's a lot to write on a cake. Yeah, too much effort for me. So they didn't write happy birthday. No, no, not happy birthday. You see, happy birthday didn't appear on cakes until after 1910 with the popularization of the song, happy birthday to you. So we've only been saying happy birthday for about a hundred years right now. It's crazy, isn't it? Before then, you just go around and be happy returns to you on the day. Birthdays seemed like a lot more effort back in the day. A lot more effort. There were gods involved. There was praying. There were giant elves. <sighs> Just too much effort. Pre-made cake mixes were available starting around 1930, but wouldn't become more popular until after World War II. In the late 1930s was also when Carvel invented the ice cream cake. The gates of cake innovation were not just open, but shattered. I love a good ice cream cake. I'd never make one, but I love eating a good ice cream cake. Why wouldn't you pick an ice cream cake? It's too much work, man. What's your favorite flavor of ice cream, right? Mint or cookies and cream. Two of my least favorite flavors. That's why we can never be together. Today, birthday cakes are more elaborate than ever. None more so than a 2015 six foot long, 1,000 pound behemoth. Purchased by an unnamed buyer for his daughter's birthday, the cake featured over 4,000 diamonds. Final price, $75 million. It's 2015 and a guy decides to buy a birthday cake and wants to remain anonymous. You know that that's gonna end up on Instagram somewhere. The cake probably had its own hashtag. What would, what would the hashtag be? $75 million cake cake? Hashtag diamonds on my cake. I like that. That's great, that's, that's awesome, man. Job. So where does that leave us today? Funny you should ask, because I kind of see them looking like this. When I think of birthday cake, I think of sprinkles, bright colors, and things that just make you want to celebrate. It is a modern rainbow drip birthday cake. This is actually a giant cake pop made to look like an ice cream cone. That is incredible, right? That is incredible. This is not made from parsley, right? That is not made from parsley, yeah. but modern cake. For those of us who can only dream of the ultimate birthday cake, multiple television and internet programs showcase fancy, sculptural, and complex birthday cakes. As long as people keep having birthdays, the birthday cake will continue to adapt and evolve. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> in a study actually published in 2017, scientists found that blowing out birthday candles can increase the chances of bacteria being found in icing by about 1,400%. So what do we do now? Not my problem. Happy birthday. It's still not my birthday. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. Lots of happiness. Good luck too. Congratulations on your birthday. Many happy returns to 